There's not a whole lot left to say about Mass Effect Andromeda. The reviews are out. Fairly average, good, bad shit, they're all over the place. While I actually thought it was an okay game, Andromeda had its backside flayed by thousands of angry YouTubers and fans. The ash cheeks of a once cherished franchise left bloody, even before the game came out. But now that the smoke has cleared and the hate is subduing, how do we measure the success of Mass Effect Andromeda? This video will attempt to take an objective look at those controversies and discuss the reception, sales, and viewership for Mass Effect Andromeda while answering the hard question, did it fail? Is Mass Effect Andromeda a bad game? No, but perhaps it wasn't the game we all expected, both technically and in terms of design. The pacing, it felt kind of off, and of course, the wonky robot character animations were hideous outside of combat, and those freaky zombie dead eyeballs may have caused a few nightmares and sleepless nights to be had. But those things have been cleaned up a bit with Andromeda's 1.05 patch released on April 6th, which also added some improvements to make the galaxy map quicker and fix the poopy lip syncing. Even a roadmap has been posted online, and it seems that Bioware wants to continue adding stuff to the game and fixing things, such as with the cinematics, the character creator, and adding more male-to-male -male romance options, if you fancy that kind of thing. So yeah, looks like they want to make Andromeda a better game. But does anyone care about Andromeda anymore? The window for excitement of the game has come and gone like a cool breeze on a hot day. The Metacritic score for Andromeda is at 74 for critics, and a 4.8 out of 10 for nearly 2,500 users. It's the lowest rated game in the series, rightfully so, for many issues covered in various reviews. But did this mixed bag reception translate into lousy sales for Andromeda? You may be surprised to hear that Mass Effect Andromeda is one of the best selling games of 2017 so far. It seems that its terrifying launch had little impact on its success, but there may be more to it than that. Players could also purchase a trial of the game for $5 per month with Origin Access. When you combine that fact with a damn near launch day review embargo, the Origin Access trial was pretty much the only thing players had to go on. Whether it was good or bad is kind of irrelevant. We got to play it early, and having some attachment to the story by being offered a small slice of it may have helped push some of those early adopters to pre-order the game. I mention this for a specific reason. Take a look at this statement from Blake Jorgensen regarding early adopter profitability. He predicts that 30-50% to 50 of the total revenue pool coming from Andromeda will come during its first week. So it's very possible that EA used Access as a tool to help encourage more people purchase the game during the first week period, knowing that up to 50% of their profitability would be coming from this group of individuals. And what about all those monthly subscription fees EA would be cashing in with Access? Hypothetically, if 100,000 people signed up for Access to play Andromeda early, and let's say 30% of those people stayed for just one month in the program or failed to cancel, that's $150,000 in EA's pockets. Not a bad business plan for Andromeda. Twitch viewership is also an important outlet that supports the success of modern day games. The more people viewing a game, the more exposure it gets and the more money it can make. Now Mass Effect Andromeda is a hybrid game. People can stream the single player campaign or multiplayer. Lots of very popular hybrid games out there exist and have huge followings, such as Grand Theft Auto V and Dark Souls, just to name a few. Mass Effect Andromeda currently has just a handful of people watching the game primetime on the Sunday evening at 5pm. And if you're interested in the lifetime trends, Andromeda peaked at around 32,000 concurrent Twitch viewers, and then it took a massive dump dive all the way down to under 1,000, a 97% drop in viewership in just three short weeks. EA banked on Andromeda earning 3 million sales during its first week, using the Origin Access trial bundle as a weapon to fuel the early adopter fire. Now regardless if it's poo poo or not, Andromeda tops the sales charts, although it doesn't really have a lot of competition now, does it? 
Breath of the Wild and Ghost Recon Wildlands had been out for a few weeks leading up to the launch of Andromeda, and no other big titles have been since released. So I think it's quite expected for Andromeda to hold a number one spot, currently, simply due to the lack of post-launch competition. So did Mass Effect Andromeda fail? To many, the game had no quality control, from the animations to the dialogue and the creepy demon faces. Others couldn't fall in love with Ryder and wanted Shepard back. But financially, Andromeda is not a failure. EA has once again made a shit ton of money from yet another controversial AAA release in Andromeda, not to mention all the extra cash that has poured in from Origin Access. We just have to hope, beg, and plead that the next installment of Mass Effect will be much better than Andromeda, a game that may be soon lost in time to many. Was Mass Effect Andromeda the game we were all expecting? Let me know down below and the first person that comments, my face is tired, wins a prize. Thanks for watching everyone. If you enjoyed this video, by all means hit the thumbs up button and subscribe here for more of our future content. And you guys have a kick-ass day.